the national best-selling micro meal series of recipes was developed by Diane Lewis and Karen Haas. Diane and Karen have demonstrated and taught microwave cooking for many years and in the process have traveled all over the country. This videotape is a natural culmination of the years spent listening to what people have to say and what they want to know about microwave cooking. Now, here's Diane and Karen. Hello, I'm Karen. Hi, I'm Diane. If you're among those microwave owners who use your microwave ovens for defrosting and reheating only, you're really missing the boat. This Micro Meals presentation is designed to help you utilize your microwave to its fullest. From our series of recipes called Micro Meals, which Karen will soon describe to you, we will share with you all of the techniques unique to microwave cooking, as well as teach you the basic principles of microwave energy. You will learn the proper method for defrosting, what factors determine even cooking, covering techniques, proper utensils to use, food placement, standing time, browning dishes and browning agents, the purpose of rotating and elevating food, and shielding techniques. Micro Meals is a series of 245 microwave tested recipe cards on three and a half by five inch cards. All recipes are day to day, easy to prepare recipes for use in any microwave oven. There are six different categories, meats, fish, and poultry, eggs, cheese, and casseroles, sandwiches, soups, and sauces, fruits, vegetables, salads, appetizers and snacks, desserts, cookies, and quick breads. If you'll notice, the recipes are color-coded across the top by category for easy filing when placed in our microwave recipe card file box. We also have a unique plastic card holder. When you insert any of our Micro Meal recipe cards, you'll see at a glance the power level, cooking time, and rotation if necessary. The card holder keeps your recipe card clean and takes little counter space. While we don't want to become highly technical and confuse you, to achieve the best possible results, you must first understand how the microwave oven works. Microwaves are very short, high-frequency radio waves, which are broadcast into the oven from a magnetron tube, which is the heart of the microwave oven. The function of the magnetron tube is to convert household electrical energy into microwave energy. The magnetron tube will instantaneously stop producing and sending microwaves whenever the oven turns off or when the door is opened just as sound will immediately stop when a radio is turned off. After being directed into the oven cavity, it is necessary that the waves be distributed throughout the oven to ensure even cooking. In some ovens, located usually at the top of the cavity, is a metal stir blade which is fan-like and deflects the waves to different areas of the oven. Sometimes a turntable is used to pass the food through the energy and some ovens have both methods of microwave distribution. Microwaves are absorbed into the food, causing the moisture molecules to vibrate and rub together at a very high rate of speed, creating friction which produces heat, much like rubbing your hands together. Microwaves will pass through paper, glass, and plastic, and are reflected off metal. This is why metal utensils and dishes with metal trim are not recommended for microwave use. It is also important that you understand variable power levels. Here's an analogy. Think of cooking in your conventional oven using only the 500 degree temperature setting. Certainly you would be limited in what could be cooked successfully. Cooking at only 100% power or full power in the microwave oven is also somewhat limiting. Microwave ovens are not standardized, so may differ in their power settings. Some settings are called high, roast, medium, bake, simmer, warm, and low. Others use percentage of power, such as 100% for high, 70% for roast, 50% for defrost, 30% for simmer, and 10% for low. 
if your oven has only a full or high power setting and a defrost setting, the defrost cycle may be used for cooking when a recipe requires a low power setting. Cooking at 100% power means that the microwave energy is coming into the oven 100% of the cooking time. 50% power would mean that the energy is coming into the oven 50% of the cooking time, and so on. Be sure to read your use and care manual very carefully. Get to know your microwave oven and its functions before you do any cooking. Today, as we share with you many microwave tips, we will be cooking recipes for micro meals. We hope you'll enjoy them. Well, Diane, should we go to the kitchen and start cooking? Diane and I are wearing micro meals aprons for the card carrying cook. As you see, we wear our recipe. The holder is attached with Velcro so it can be removed easily for washing. Diane is going to start with a recipe from Micro Meals called Chicken Parmesan. Diane? Thank you, Karen. Before we begin with this recipe, I would like to give you the exact ingredients so that with that out of the way, you'll be able to concentrate on the techniques that I will be using. Okay, let's begin with the eight chicken breast halves, one cup of dry breadcrumbs, one half cup grated Parmesan cheese, one half teaspoon garlic salt and one half teaspoon salt, one fourth teaspoon pepper, a tablespoon of parsley flakes, and one half cup butter or margarine. Now, of course, the chicken breasts have all been patted dry and ready to dip into the melted butter, like so and then into our coating. Thoroughly coat the chicken parts and then place in your dish. The dish that I'm using is round. Whenever possible, use round or oval shaped dishes because the microwave energy will penetrate the outer edges first and then conduct the heat into the center of the food. So, so that you don't get overcooking, put the thicker portions towards the outside of the dish. Okay. Okay. Arranging them in this fashion. like so. And the last one for the center. And you may want to do a little rearranging during the cooking process so that the center piece can be moved toward the outside of the dish for more even cooking, like so. Okay. One of the questions that we are always asked in our cooking classes is, but will the chicken brown? Anything in the microwave long enough or over 10 minutes will begin to brown. However, this recipe calls for the use of paprika to further improve the appearance. Paprika has been around for a long time in conventional cooking, and you'll want to use it in microwave cooking as well. Be generous and it'll It'll look just great. Now, when we're talking about browning, you'll also want to think about other ways to enhance the browning of your food for the microwave. Some of the browning agents that I think of are soy sauce, a kitchen bouquet, barbecue sauce, and steak sauces, to name just a few. Browning dishes are also available. Browning dishes are used for searing meats or stir-frying, and the browning grills or griddles are great for frying eggs, grilling sandwiches, or cooking pancakes. The dishes are made with a special material that absorbs the microwave energy and require preheating. But you'll receive the necessary instructions as to the length of preheating time with the purchase of your dish. Okay, our final step 
in preparation before cooking is the covering to be used. Place a piece of wax paper over the chicken to retain the heat and prevent spattering. Do not use a tight covering such as plastic wrap or lid for this dish. We want a crispy texture rather than a steamed, overly moist texture. Believe me, you'll never experience more tender, moist chicken than when it's cooked in the microwave oven. The dish is now ready for the oven, and with all the preparation completed properly, we want to make sure we get the best cooking results. First, elevate the dish using a cooking shelf, overturned plate, or as we're using, a microwave turntable. The turntable will rotate the food to ensure more even cooking and elevate the food into an area where better cooking pattern is available. If you're not using a turntable, rotate your dish several times during cooking. Now let's go over these important techniques. Round or oval shaped utensils promote more even cooking. Placement of the food in the dish will determine whether the food is cooked evenly or not. Browning agents will add to the overall appearance of some foods, and wax paper is acceptable as a covering technique in the microwave to retain heat and prevent spattering. Elevating and rotating will also promote a more evenly cooked dish. Now we're ready to start cooking. The reci this recipe calls for cooking at full power for between 17 and 20 minutes. Before Karen starts showing you defrosting techniques, the chicken parmesan is done and I'd like for you to see it. Mm. Here. Ooh, Diane, it looks great. And only 20 minutes in the microwave, Karen. Isn't that just great? I know, because this recipe is our family recipe, and it took an hour conventionally. Thank you, Diane. As Diane mentioned, I'm going to be telling you about defrosting. Defrosting is one of the greatest benefits in owning a microwave oven. I remember a friend of mine, when she got her microwave, and when I asked her, how do you like it? She said, it's magic. That's how I feel about defrost cycle. It is so great to go home, defrost meat, and in a short time serve my family a nice meal. I'm going to share with you a few defrosting tips. Remember, all frozen foods except vegetables must be thawed before cooking. The secret to successful microwave defrosting is to keep this principle in mind. Microwave energy is attracted more to water than to ice crystals. The purpose of microwave defrosting is to quickly change the ice crystals into water with the minimum of cooking. On your defrost cycle, a combination cooking-rusting pattern occurs. This is to transfer heat to the center of the food. A few things to remember is to remove the styrofoam tray as soon as possible because it insulates the bottom of the meat like an ice chest. Also remove the paper liner if you have one because it absorbs meat juices and it will draw energy away from the meat. Okay, Then you cover wax with wax paper. This will hold the warmth in around the food as it begins to defrost. Allow approximately four to five minutes per pound. Food may need rotating or turning over halfway through the defrost period and when possible rearrange, like if you have chicken pieces, break them up and turn them around, or if you have already defrosted portions of the hamburger, remove that part too. Now this has already been partially defrosted for you, and you can see there's still the frozen portion here. So I'm going to break this up, like so, and then I'm going to be putting in my defrosted portions into another bowl, and then just complete defrosting the rest of my hamburger. Okay. Okay, now I won't need to defrost this for a, a good four minutes, probably just a couple of minutes, and I should have the rest of my hamburger defrosted. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how to defrost a turkey. 
With high density foods such as this, start by placing the breast side down. Defrost four to five minutes per pound for only one quarter of the defrosting time. Then turn breast side up and return to the oven. Remember to rotate if you're not using a turn tray. Also check for warm spots if you should see signs of overcooking. Cover these areas with foil. This is called shielding. Shielding is used to stop overcooking. St foil will stop the penetration of the microwaves going into the areas that you don't want to cook any longer. Since the legs and the wings are a lot less dense than this portion, this is almost inevitable that this is going to happen. So just cover the little areas, the wing tips, and possibly the very ends like this. Sometimes through the breast cavity, you might need a strip like this. The only thing to remember when you're using foil for shielding is do not let the foil touch the oven cavity. Your oven walls are metal, and metal should not touch metal or arcing will occur. After the suggested defrosting time, and your turkey is, is pretty much fully defrosted, the way that you finish off defrosting your turkey is by placing it in cool water. Check the cavity, and if you can remove the giblets, do so, and run cool water. It should be just, it should not be icy inside, just cool. Okay, I've completed defrosting my turkey. And now I'm going to, I think my hamburger should be completely defrosted. Okay, it is. Okay, we'll do it this way. I'm going to start preparing a recipe from our appetizers category called sombrero dip. I'm going to be browning my hamburger in a batter bowl. And I have to show you the batter bowl. Diane and I love this dish. One of the things that we like best about it is because it has a handle and of course a spout. And what we like also is the fact that the handle never seems to get hot. Remember, the food is the only thing that ever makes the sides of your bowl hot. So when you place it into the oven, it's always e easy to grab and not use a pot holder. I'm going to be adding my onions and cooking my hamburger for about three to four minutes or until it loses its pink color. Remember, when you're cooking ground beef in the microwave, just like you were cooking on top of the stove, it's important that you go back and stir to break up the hamburger. And this particular recipe, we want our ground beef to be quite fine. So I'm going to have to go back in and I'm going to have to stir. This is more important to stir than it is to rotate. Okay. Okay. I'll tell you now what the ingredients are in sombrero dip. It's one pound ground beef, one quarter cup of chopped onion, one fourth cup hot ketchup, one and one half teaspoon of chili powder, one half teaspoon salt, one eight ounce can kidney beans drained and mashed, one cup sharp cheddar cheese, one fourth cup green onions, and one fourth cup sliced green olives. The hamburger should be ready. Okay. If you noticed, I left my spoon while I was cooking my hamburger right in the dish when I put it in the oven. If you have a microwave safe dish or spoon, Go ahead and just leave it in there. Okay, I'm going to assemble my ingredients here, which is salt. And I want to explain too, anytime you use salt in the microwave, we prefer that you, if you can mix it in, it's okay. But we don't recommend surface salting because it can dehydrate or, or dry out the top of your food. But as long as you can mix it in, it's fine. And then I'm going to add my chili powder, which is one and one half teaspoon. That seems like a lot. Don't, don't be afraid to use this amount. It's not very hot to the taste. Then we have our mashed kidney beans. Okay. 
and a quarter cup of hot ketchup. I'm going to stir this well and place it in a shallow dish. take this particular recipe to, oh, whether I'm going to a cocktail party or I'm having, I'm entertaining at home. This is a good recipe to make ahead of time, but only make it up to this point because you're gonna have to refrigerate it. And when you take it from the refrigerator, and if I had completely as assembled the rest of my ingredients, which are cheese, olives, and onions, I wouldn't want my cheese on there because when you uh, have cheese on and cook it when it's completely uh, cold, it's gonna overcook your cheese. So the idea is to put it, take it from the refrigerator, place it in your microwave, heat it thoroughly, and then do your garnishing. So I've got my cheese. Here we go. Okay. My green onion. This really is quite a colorful dish. and my green olives. Okay. I'm going to place this in the oven just until the cheese melts. This should take about two minutes. Remember also to rotate during this time. The sombrero dip is ready. Hasn't this been a great party dip for us, Karen? It sure has. I've served this so many times and everybody loves it. And now Diane is going to show you how to cook vegetables. To get the most nutrition and the best flavor from the vegetables you eat, cook them in the microwave. When microwaved, both fresh and frozen vegetables cook rapidly in very little water, so vitamins and minerals are not cooked out. The result are vegetables that are garden fresh in flavor, texture, and color. The most frequent positive comments Karen and I hear from people everywhere are how they love the flavor of vegetables cooked in the microwave. The first basic rule for microwaving vegetables is cover tightly with either casserole lid or plastic wrap. When using plastic wrap, be sure to leave a corner turned back to allow the vent, or to make a vent for the steam to escape. When cooking vegetables, such as broccoli and asparagus, arrange with the tougher stem ends toward the outside of the dish and the flowerets toward the center. Probably the most graphic example of the loss of nutrients by conventional cooking is corn in the cob. You can easily see that most of the flavor and nutrients are cooked out by the yellow color of the water. We probably should drink the water to gain the nutrients and throw away the corn. In the microwave, one ear of corn will take about three to five minutes to cook covered in plastic wrap, while four ears would require 12 to 16 minutes. So you can see the quantity of food in the microwave directly affects the cooking time. Potatoes, squash, and other vegetables with thick skins should be pierced to prevent them from bursting while cooking. Turn over or rotate their positions halfway through the cooking period. Look how easy it is to cut this squash that I have cooked for only a few minutes. And you don't need a cleaver to cut open this squash. There are many ways to serve vegetables to make them a little more exciting. And one of our favorite recipes is the frosted cauliflower, which I'm about to prepare. A whole head of cauliflower, depending on its size, of course, will cook in about eight to 12 minutes in the microwave. The utensil that I'm going to be using is a vegetable steamer and has little openings at the top to allow the steam to escape. I'm gonna put this in the oven now. Okay, while 
that's cooking, I'd like to make our mixture, um, our frosting mixture for the cauliflower. And I'll be using, um, well, I better check my recipe. One half cup mayonnaise, two teaspoons prepared mustard, and three fourths cup grated cheese. Okay, the cheese. Mayonnaise. And mustard. Blend these ingredients together and you'll be ready to place it on top of the cauliflower when the cauliflower is, is finished cooking. Okay, that's all there is to that. Now the cauliflower is completely cooked and we're ready to put the topping or the frosting on top of the cauliflower. And it'll go back into the oven for about one minute. One to two minutes. Put the top back on, like so, and we'll take it back to the oven. I'd like to take credit for this one. But Karen, I did all the work. All right, I'll let you do the finishing okay. touches. How's that? Beautiful. Ready to serve. Mm -hmm. And now it's Karen's turn to do a little work. And I'm going to show you how to cook breakfast in the microwave. This is also a recipe for micro meals in the meats category. I have already assembled my ingredients, which are two eggs, one half cup milk, one and one half cups cracker crumbs rolled fine, one fourth cup minced onion, one cup chopped apple, two pounds bulk pork sausage, and one teaspoon of poultry seasoning. This recipe should be made at least a few hours before cooking, so flavors can blend. I like this recipe because it serves at least 10 to 12 people. It's great for a brunch or after it's been cooked to freeze in individual portions for a quick sausage and egg breakfast. The baking ring I am using is excellent for foods which cannot be stirred during microwaving. Energy can penetrate from the center as well as the sides, top and bottom. You can use this dish for meatloaf, salmon loaf, and of course it's excellent for quick breads. I'm going to be cooking this for half the cooking time, which is about eight minutes, on high power. Then I'll invert onto a baking rack for the grease to drain away. The first cooking stage has been completed. I'm going to invert on my roasting rack. As you can see, any excess grease can drain away. Another reason I wanted to invert this is so browning will take place on the inverted side. It will look better for serving. Now back to the oven for the remaining eight minutes. The sausage ring has completed cooking and I'm going to be covering with foil for the carryover cooking period. Carryover cooking, or standing time, is part of the cooking process. It is used to complete cooking and tenderizing food. Even though you have removed food from the microwave, some cooking will continue. Always select the shortest time given in a recipe. After standing time, you can always add time, but you can't take it away if you've overcooked. Okay. Well, we'll set this aside. And next, I'm going to show you how to cook eggs in the microwave. Okay, You know, when everyone is rushing around in the morning, cooking breakfast in the microwave saves precious minutes. 
Children learn to scramble their own eggs because there are no hot fry pans involved. Whether you scramble one egg or a dozen eggs, the one important thing to remember, do not overcook. Scrambled eggs, when removed from the microwave, should look wet or glossy. This is where carryover cooking finishes the job. Now, I'm mixing my eggs, and I've already melted the butter on the top. I'm going to add a little water. Diane and I like to use water. Some people like milk, but we feel it makes the eggs a little bit lighter and a little bit fluffier. One, a few points to remember about eggs is microwave energy is attracted to sugar and fat. Egg yolks contain more fat than the white, so the yolk will attract more energy. However, when the yolks and whites are mixed together, microwave is even. If you need to salt, this is the time that you can put the salt in also. Okay. Now, when I place this into the oven, the one thing I'm going to uh, do is, after about five minutes, after the initial cold comes off of it, I'm going to be stirring my eggs. As the egg forms around the outside of the pan, I'm just going to fold it in. And then I'll watch towards the end because I want to make sure that I don't lose that glossy look. Okay, into the oven. The eggs are scrambled, and as you can see, carryover cooking has already started. They still have a little glossy look, but they will be completed fish, uh, cooking by the time you go to eat them. I'm going to garnish our pork sausage ring here today. We think this makes an especially attractive way to serve our pork sausage ring. I've done this for brunches. And sometimes if my family's lucky, I go all out for them too. Okay, then we'll garnish with just a little parsley. And we have sausage ring and scrambled eggs. And now I'm going to show you how to poach eggs in the microwave. Today we're using Micro Meals Egg Cooker. It has four removable little cups for easy handling. Now I've already buttered the inside for easy egg removal. Removal. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I'll break my last egg here. It's important to pierce the membrane of the yolk so that air can escape. Otherwise, the yolk could burst. This is why you can't cook eggs in the shell in your microwave. Steam builds up inside the yolk, and it could burst, making a horrible mess to clean. Now select a round or a square dish. Bring your water to boiling. I have two and a half cups of water here, and I place my little egg cooker inside the dish. And then I'm going to cover with plastic wrap. If you have a lid to your dish that you're using, that's fine also. And I'm going to seal in the steam, and I'll be cooking my eggs for two to two and a half minutes. Remember to select the uh, least amount of time because you can always add the time to the desired doneness of the egg. The eggs are poached. Be sure and pull the plastic away from you when removing them so you don't get a steam burn. I'm going to remove the little cups and place it on my toast. Oops. They look great. And here we have poached eggs. 
Now, if you need hard boiled eggs for garnishing or for salad or for, let's say, potato salad, all you have to do is cook your eggs in the egg cooker just probably one minute longer. Now I'm going to show you how nice hard cooked eggs are in the microwave. As you can see, there's no little green edges from keeping it boiling too long on the range top. You can also use your egg cooker on the range top for boiling eggs if you prefer. Well, now that you've cooked breakfast in the microwave, Karen, I'd like to try a soup. The kitchen's all yours. Thanks, Karen. I've already begun my preparation for my soup. This recipe is from the sandwiches, soups, and sauces category of Michael Meals, and it's called minestrone. First, I melted two tablespoons of butter for about one minute in the microwave on high power. Then I added a fourth cup chopped onion and one medium zucchini sliced. I cooked this again on full power for approximately five minutes until it was tender. Now we're going to add two cans of beef broth and a can of chopped whole tomatoes, a package of frozen lima beans, baby lima beans, and a half cup broken vermicelli. The following spices will also be added. One tablespoon grated Parmesan cheese, a fourth teaspoon basil leaves, one fourth teaspoon pepper, an eighth teaspoon garlic salt, and a dash of cayenne pepper. Now let's assemble these ingredients. I had added my tomatoes to the beef broth. And now my vermicelli. Remember, this is uncooked. A bit more. The baby lima beans. And now finally, the spices. And stir thoroughly, blend all the ingredients. Now we're ready to put it in the microwave. And we are going to be cooking this soup on full power for approximately 20 minutes. But before I put it into the oven, I'd like to make a few comments about cooking soup in the microwave. While there really isn't a lot of time saving, there are definitely some great advantages. Think of the convenience of not having to stir constantly. The heat source in microwave cooking is not only from the bottom of the dish, but rather from all around. I'd also like to add something that we haven't mentioned, and that is that the microwave oven takes less energy to operate than conventional oven or range top. And in warmer climates or in the summer, you're not adding heat to your house. And the greatest advantage of all is that the microwave oven shuts itself off. There's no need to babysit your soup. Now let's put the soup into the microwave. Hi, I'm back. I'd like to make you a recipe from our desserts category, and I decided to show you a coffee cake. Good, can I watch? Sure. The speed in which you can bake a cake is so nice, there's nothing better than the aroma of a coffee cake baking in the morning. You can be sure to wow your guests or your family with this tropical coffee cake. The ingredients are one cup sugar, one half cup butter or margarine, two eggs, one cup sour cream, one teaspoon vanilla, two cups flour, one teaspoon baking soda, one teaspoon baking powder, dash of salt, one half cup chopped nuts, one half cup coconut, three tablespoons of sugar, one teaspoon cinnamon, and two teaspoon grated orange rind. Okay. I've mixed my batter and I'll be placing it in a fluted tube cake dish. Okay. 
Like the baking ring, the energy can penetrate from the center as well as the sides, top and bottom. I'm going to sprinkle half of the ingredients, the topping ingredients, around the bottom. This is nice because the, it offers the color when you invert this coffee cake and you don't have to worry about browning. And then I'm going to put my batter, half of the batter around the topping. Then I'm going to repeat this procedure. Mm -hmm. We've served good. this many times, haven't we? Oh, Karen? yes. Okay. And I'm going to put this around the top. This is just not a speedy procedure. Okay, and as I smooth out my top, okay, finished. I'll be baking this at 70% power for about 11 to 12 minutes. During baking, it's very important to rotate, also to elevate. If your cakes are not getting done on the bottom, that's the reason. Karen, your cake looks just beautiful. Your soup smells really good too, Diane. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this presentation on basic microwave cooking, and we've just scratched the surface. Karen, we've been cooking in our microwave ovens for a long time now, but I'll never forget when I first got my microwave oven. I think it was two days later I invited 12 people over for brunch, and I used only my microwave oven to cook. And since then, I've learned to appreciate the many, many benefits of microwave cooking. But I must admit that the speed in which this microwave cooks fascinated me the most. After owning a microwave for so many years, we really take all those conveniences for granted. I'll always remember the time I had to take our family microwave out of our home for a cooking demonstration. During the dinner hour, my family looked at me in such shock and asked, well, what are we going to do? And I said, remember the pots and pans? You should have heard the groans. And speaking of pots and pans, oh, how I dislike the chore of cleaning my range top. I don't have that problem anymore, and I love it. We hope we really inspired you to start cooking in your microwave. Remember, you didn't learn to cook conventionally overnight. Your inexperience with your oven is what is causing you to be frustrated. Start with a few simple recipes and you'll progress. Then you'll be ready for our next presentation on advanced microwave cooking. <laughs>